Did Sauron repent? It's a question Tolkien scholars have debated for a long time, so let's see whether we can come to a conclusion on it. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. On this channel we cover Tolkien's Legendarium in full, as well as other great fantasy worlds. A Song of Ice and Fire and The Witcher, for example. If you like the sound of that, there's a subscribe button in the bottom right of the screen. Sauron is often portrayed as the great evil, implacable, cruel and unchanging. And in The Lord of the Rings, he pretty much is that. He doesn't get much screen time or page time, but he's basically just pure evil with few or no discernible redeeming features. But what we see in The Lord of the Rings is of course just the final chapter in Sauron's long life, and it's worth pointing out that he didn't start evil. His moral path from there to the baddie in The Lord of the Rings is also not a straight line. The more you dig into Tolkien's writings, the more you can see that his characters are rarely as two-dimensional as his detractors like to imply. Sauron wasn't always Sauron. He started out being called Myron, which means the Admirable, quite a good name to have. He was one of the Maiar who went down into Arda to tend, build and care for the new world. And he was pretty effective at it. He had a love of order and control and was considered mighty. However, over time, this love of planning and control started to grate against the Valar that he was serving. He started to admire the efficiency and power with which Melkor Morgoth delivered his plans and so began his fall. For a while he stayed with the Valar, but when Morgoth pushed the Valar back from Middle-earth, forcing them to create a new land to live on and ruled Middle-earth himself, Sauron defected, drawn no doubt by the prospect of ruling some places himself and ruling them well, orderly and efficient. He rose swiftly in Morgoth's trust, becoming his de facto second in command. And when Morgoth was first defeated in the Battle of the Powers and chained for three ages, Sauron managed to evade capture, leaving him in charge of Morgoth's empire. When Morgoth returned via the destruction of the Two Trees of Valinor, Sauron was again given much power and control by Morgoth. But again, just a few hundred years later, the power of Valinor took on Morgoth and defeated him. All of which history leads us to this question. What does Sauron do now? This is the second time he has seen that when Valinor turns its attention to Middle-earth, Morgoth will be defeated. He may respect Morgoth, but there's no real safety there anymore. And it's worth pointing out that Sauron was never truly ideologically aligned with Morgoth. Morgoth was about rebellion against Aru Iluvatar, destruction and darkness, whereas Sauron cared about planning and order. They found themselves on the same side in opposing the Valar, and Sauron admired Morgoth's effectiveness, but they never really shared a vision for Middle-earth. So now Sauron has to decide what he does without Morgoth there. This is what we read that he did in the Silmarillion. Sauron put on his fair hue again and did obeisance to Aonwe, the herald of Manwe, and abjured all his evil deeds. And some hold that this was not at first falsely done, but that Sauron in truth repented, if only out of fear, being dismayed by the fall of Morgoth and the great wrath of the Lords of the West. But it was not within the power of Aonwe to pardon those of his own order, and he commanded Sauron to return to Aman and there receive the judgment of Manwe. Then Sauron was ashamed, and he was unwilling to return in humiliation and to receive from the Valar a sentence, it might be, of long servitude in proof of his good faith. For under Morgoth his power had been great. Therefore, when Aonwe departed, he hid himself in Middle-earth, and he fell back into evil, for the bonds that Morgoth had laid upon him were very strong. So Sauron's first thought was to repent, or at least to say that he was repenting. We should note here that Tolkien hedges his language a bit, saying that some hold that this was at first not falsely done. In other words, those that wrote this bit of the Silmarillion, in world this was the elves, didn't know if he was actually repenting or just pretending. All seem to agree though that he didn't want to go to a man to be judged by Manwe, thinking it would probably be quite a harsh judgement. He was probably right in that incidentally, he had done some pretty bad things by then. Which makes us think that perhaps this wasn't a real repentance, for surely a truly repentant man, or 
Maya would have accepted that he needed to be judged for what he had done and would accept any punishment for it. But there's more, because Tolkien does give us a slightly more objective interpretation of what happened in one of his letters. Letter 131 is to his publishers in that window of time before The Lord of the Rings was published, when he still had hope that they might publish The Silmarillion alongside it. They didn't want to for a variety of reasons, but in trying to persuade them, Tolkien penned a lengthy summary of the story of The Silmarillion in the hopes that it would persuade them. So, Unlike his two published stories, and even many of his letters back to fans, where he adopts a rather subjective in-world narrative style, this is him explaining the plot from a more writerly perspective, as it were. Sauron, he writes, repents in fear when the first enemy is utterly defeated, but in the end does not do as was commanded, return to the judgment of the gods. So Sauron does repent, but he repents in fear, not out of any feeling that he did wrong, just out of fear that the Valar will punish him harshly. Which makes sense of why he repented to Eonwe, the herald of Manwe, but when told that he would have to kneel before Manwe himself, he just turns around, runs off and hides again in Middle-earth. It's pretty much what he did the previous time. But what's even more interesting about Letter 131 is what it says about Sauron's motivations after that. For those keeping track of the ages, this is now the start of the Second Age, that thousand years or more before he started constructing Barad-dûr in Mordor and appeared as Anatar to trick the elves. Celebrimbor was happily forging things in Eregion, Gilgalad ruling from Linden and the dwarves making khazad the greatest underground city of them all. What was Sauron up to? We're told that he lingered in Middle-earth, then very slowly, beginning with fair motives, the reorganisation and rehabilitation of the ruin of Middle-earth, neglected by the gods, he became a reincarnation of evil, and a thing lusting for complete power, and so consumed ever more fiercely with hate, especially of gods and elves. There's a lot to unpack here. Sauron may not have truly repented, but in this period he did still start off with fair motives. He thought that the Valar had abandoned Middle-earth, and to be fair, they had been distancing themselves from it for quite some time. So he set to rehabilitating and reorganising it, seemingly starting in the east, so out of sight of most of the elves, humans, dwarves and so on that we know. Then, over time, his desire to do that in his usual planned, controlled way became very controlling. He thought that he alone could manage Middle-earth into becoming a better place, and he hated the Valar and the Elves for implicitly and explicitly opposing that. His big plan with the Rings of Power was basically an attempt to bring the Elves under his control, not just because he hated the Elves, but because he loved control and thought that he should be in control, and that led inevitably to the whole Dark Lord thing. He thought that he alone should be in charge, so anyone who didn't believe that was against him. So did Sauron repent? Sort of, but never properly. Never out of remorse, certainly. Just out of fear of being held to account for what he had done. Which is not to say that he never had good intentions. In the beginning of the Second Age, while no one in the west of Middle-earth knew where he had gone, he genuinely did want the best for the continent, as he saw it. He thought the Valar had abandoned Middle-earth, which they sort of had. They certainly never set foot there again. And he thought that, after all the chaos and destruction of the First Age, which was undeniably full of chaos and destruction, Middle-earth needed a bit of calm and order. And it definitely did. What he lacked was the humility to believe that anyone else could provide that leadership and order. That's why his good intentions turned to evil. The evil that Middle-earth faced from him in the Second and Third Ages was never just evil for evil's sake. He was never just a cut-and-paste bad guy. It's perhaps overquoted and misquoted, but everyone is a hero in their own story, even Sauron. To Sauron, he was just trying to bring some order and control to a chaotic world abandoned by the gods. To everyone else, it felt like tyranny. Sauron didn't ever truly repent, because he never thought that he was in the wrong. 
In this instance, Sauron's road to hell truly was paved with good intentions, for a short while anyway. If you'd like to see more videos like this about Tolkien's Legendarium, please click on the link on the left of your screen. Or to support this channel, the best way to do that is by clicking on the link on the right of your screen. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.